Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. As you know, the Dan Aziz Joshua Boazzi fight fell through because Aziz suffered a, a injured back. I think it's postponed rather than cancelled. So when that's going to happen, I do not know. But as a result, the uh, boxer card, which is on on Sky, has been boiled down and moved to a much smaller venue, which is the classic York Hall. It's rather becoming. Um, Ben Shalom and Boxer's second home because they had the Caroline Dubois uh, card there recently, and I think, and also Fraser Clark when he fought uh, Marius Vac. But it's a great venue, it's a brilliant venue, fantastic atmosphere, but it is quite a small venue. And the substitute main event is actually a really good fight, it's potentially a really good fight between Mikhail Lawal and. Now, this is for the British cruiserweight title held by Lawal um, and Lawal uh, I believe won this yes it was was it well, yes it was because it was that's right it was a vacant title he fought David Jameson of Scotland who I think was about nine and one at the time did he have any draws I don't know but he, he only lost once before he had nine wins and he took the fight at short notice and he gave a very good account of himself against Lawal uh, but he retired after eight rounds with a broken jaw since then, Lawal has not fought. So this will be his first defence of that title. And it's a tough one. Because Isaac Chamberlain, um, currently 15 wins with 8, eight uh, KOs. Two defeats, both on points, to very, very good men. Uh, two fights ago, he lost a unanimous 12-round decision to Chris Billam Smith. He won a few rounds, but I think Billam Smith definitely won that fight. That was for the... That was when Billum Smith was EBU champ, and I think the, the Commonwealth belt was on the line as well. Um, and prior to that, if you go back about half a dozen fights and back to was it 2018, 2019, he fought Lawrence Acoli when he was undefeated. Acoli also undefeated at the time. Acoli, I think, was 7 0, and he lost a 10 round decision. It was too. Too, I don't know, I'm tempted to say it was too early in their careers, but with Coley you never know, because it was an ugly, dull fight, won by a Coley. Chamberlain was down in the first round and, and in the sixth, but was never really hurt. You know, they were two legitimate knockdowns, <clears throat> but um, it was a scrappy, horrible fight, as so many of a Coley's fights are. Um... And that was the end of the unbeaten record for Isaac Chamberlain. But if you know this channel, you'll know we don't care about uh, zeros, unbeaten records, couldn't care less. Um, Isaac came back, fought Luke Watkins, beat him over 10 rounds. And then he signed a five-year deal with Mick Hennessy, which raised quite a few eyebrows because Mick Hennessy, even though he had the Channel 5 contract at the time, he's not what you would call a... Well, he's, <laughs> He's a good a good promoter. I mean, I like a lot of his cards. There's some real quality on there. Um, and, of course, he's, he had a lot of success with Carl Frotch initially and Tyson Fury, a tremendous amount of success. But he's never rivaled Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn as the premier uh, promoter in Britain. But a lot of people, I've met a lot of people who've had dealings with Mick Hennessy, fighters I'm talking about now, and they all speak very highly of him. And I believe one of them, I've met... Um, Isaac Chamberlain, but people I know have met him and said that he speaks highly of Mick Hennessy. So he's obviously been looked after. Uh, but as a result, Hennessy, as a result of Hennessy losing his contract with with Channel Five, a lot of um, Isaac's fights have now gone through Sky and Boxer because Boxer have struck up a relationship with Mick Hennessy. <clears throat> but but as a result of this. Um, Certainly after the Luke Watkins fight, I mean, I think there was a break of about almost two years uh, for Isaac Chamberlain. And then he came back against a couple of journeymen, scored some early knockouts. Um, and kind of, he had a win over Dylan um, Prasevich, which was a one-rounder. That, that wasn't too bad a result, but really he was treading water for quite a long time, for two or three years. Um, and then he got the Billum Smith fight, and since then... You know, he's, I think he's had one, one eight-round runaround um, over a gatekeeper-type journeyman. He had a winning record, but perhaps not the best fighter. And now he's in with Mikhail Lawal. Now, right now, Isaac should be in his prime because he's 29. If you've seen him fight, you'll know he's got, you know, he's he's athletic, he's quick. Um, 
but he's quite small as a cruiserweight. I think against a Coley, that really showed up, although a Coley's a very big cruiserweight. Isaac looked really almost a division smaller, half a division smaller, should we say. Um, but he likes to he likes to go in there. It does have some pop to his punches. Uh, he likes to um, counter punch a lot of the time. He's not averse to fighting on the front foot. He can do that as well. Um, he starts quite quickly in fights, um, and overall, he's got you know a good a good amount of skills. There isn't really a punch I can think of that he doesn't throw with some precision and some good technique. He doesn't really have any weaknesses, seems to have a good engine. Um, like I say, he gave Billum Smith a reasonable argument, although Chris was probably a bit more, yeah, a little bit slicker. I think, see, I think Chris Billum Smith's biggest weapon is the fact that he's got Shane McGuigan in his corner, because Shane McGuigan comes up with some great tactical analysis of fights and is able to, to really guide his boxer through choppy waters. Um, and it just looked to me like Billum Smith had a bit more structure to what he was doing and Isaac was doing it more sort of off the cuff. Uh, but he did win rounds in that fight. He did win rounds. Um, and he, like I say, he's 29, so he should be in his prime. Now, if you look at Lowell, um, again, he hasn't fought for... Um, must be getting on for a year. I think it was, it was either October or November was the Jameson fight. And prior to that, he's really only fought... Um, he actually fought Jameson twice because I think he earlier on in their career. Am I right in saying that? I think it was on one of those boxer cards or something like that, like those those sort of prize fighter by another name cards. Anyway, apart from Jameson, if you look down his his record, you're not seeing many many killers to put it mildly. Um, he did beat Damien Chambers, and I think that might have been in, in also in that sort of boxer. Bring a uh, prize fighter thing. He knocked him out in a round. He was previously undefeated, but you know, sometimes statistics. What was it? Uh, was said by um, what's the old saying? Statistics, um, lies, damn lies, and statistics. <laughs> sometimes statistics can be very, very dishonest. They can give a very, very false impression, as Mark Twain said. But. Um, yeah, Chambers, Damien Chambers, of course, went, was undefeated, got knocked out in a round, and they went on to fight Alan Babich a couple of years ago, got done in three. Um, but that's the only other name I know on, on Lawal's record. And Lawal, he's, he's, I mean, he's 6'2", he's 28 now, so he should be in his physical prime. To me, he doesn't, there are periods where he's kind of asleep, he doesn't fire enough punches. Um, he does have reasonable skills, you know, decent skills. But Jameson gave him some something to think about, and he he puts the pressure on reasonably well. It, it, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say he's particularly. He's got very heavy hands. He does have eleven KOs in seventeen wins with no draws and no defeats, so he's doing something right. Uh, so he does have decent power. <coughs> or Chamberlain, as we know, was on the floor twice against a Coley, but a Coley can hit hard. So I wouldn't hang Majora out against Lowell, but I think Chamberlain's jaw is is pretty decent um, I can see this fight being scrappy in places and action packed in others I think Chamberlain will start much quicker um, he'll probably start on the front foot although he's happy boxing on the back foot Chamberlain as well I think Lawal will have to get his motor running and after about three rounds maybe four he'll start to move into it this is a 12 round I don't forget uh, he'll start to try and put some pressure on Chamberlain Chamberlain might back off a little bit um, might try to rely on the jab more after about four rounds and he has he was done what he was doing early on I think he'll be a lot more cavalier early on uh, taking a few chances jumping in trying to put it on Lawal early Lawal's physicality because he is a strong unit even though I don't think his overall skill set is quite as good as Chamberlain's I think uh, he'll try to put it on him with physical determination pressure um I can see I can see after six rounds, if you break the fight into two halves, after six rounds, I think Chamberlain will be winning. I think the middle rounds, the wall might get a second wind and Chamberlain might slow down a bit, which would make it more difficult. But I think ultimately Chamberlain, with his experience of the fights with Akoli and Billum Smith, I think will probably hang on, not that he'll be in any real trouble, 
but I think he'll he'll keep his boxing together nicely enough to resist the sort of more physical, cruder attacks of Lawal. And I think he'll probably outpoint Lawal. I would say maybe a 116, 112, certainly 115, 113. I think he's got a better skill set, Chamberlain. I think he's got a good engine. So Lawal's engine ain't bad, but I can see him out working Lawal. I can see him out thinking him. And Lawal won't go away. It'll be a pest. It'll be in Chamberlain's face, doing his damnedest to win. And I think he'll win certain rounds on sheer physicality. But I've, I've always thought skills pay the bills. It's like like when at a higher level when Bivol fought Zerdo. A lot of people say, oh, Zerdo's massive. He'll give Bivol all the problems in the world. I, I, don't, I didn't see it. I picked Bivol to win that fight because I do think the old skills pay the bills cliche is actually true. And I think although Lawal is not an unskilled fighter, I think Chamberlain's better. And therefore, I see him out pointing Lawal. Like I say, one, one sixteen, one twelve, maybe, um, and becoming British cruiserweight champion. I could be wrong. <laughs> I frequently am wrong. If you watch my videos, my predictions are not. No, I get more right than I get wrong, but I do get some. I do get some stinkers occasionally. So maybe this is one of them. But let me know what you think. Who are you picking? Who do you think is going to win? Are you looking forward to the fight? Like I say, I think bits of it will be grab fest, and then you'll have about you'll have bursts of action. I think it will be one of those fights which is a sort of mixed bag but it is intriguing it is a good matchup a very good matchup and should be overall a pretty good main event at the york hall let me know what you think comments below um subscribe to the channel if you're new hit the subscribe button and right cross on that uh, like thing that thumbs up thing as well because they count them apparently they count them and spread the word about Joe Stunner Boxing. If you know anyone who likes boxing say go over and subscribe to Joe Stunner Boxing. It's a good channel. All right, thanks for your time as always. Speak soon. Bye for now.